Hi, everybody. This is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and it's 2024, starting off the 2024 season of Prehistoric Facts with a Q&A episode. So hopefully everybody's holiday went well over the holiday break, and hopefully everybody actually had a good time visiting friends and family, and hopefully you had a safe new year, and uh, hopefully everybody in your family's been safe and healthy and doing some uh, pretty cool, pretty cool and good things. Uh, out there and so hopefully you guys are doing some cool and good things around as well and hopefully that our 2024 season is going to go much much better uh or 2024 season is going to go really really well and i think it could and so hopefully uh things can go well uh for all of you too so for 2024 so whatever your goals are for 2024 uh you know make sure you keep up to date with those goals and like you don't need to like check them every day but i'd probably say like do like like a small goal like every day, you know, that's that's the most important thing here. And so like my goals continue to you know, throughout 2024 is continuing to, you know, keep my weight in check in which I have been. And so and uh, and uh, I have lost all, almost uh, 10 pounds, which is actually pretty good, which is pretty good. And so I'm just watching my diet and uh, I'll do some um uh, different kinds of exercises uh, to keep going. And so, but anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's actually get to the questions, shall we? So Luke Zilla, I'll start off with your questions first. How would a scientifically accurate Indominus Rex look like? That's hard to determine. Um, Because remember, Indominus Rex is a hybrid of like like actual animals and like actual animal DNA and dinosaur DNA. And so I probably would say it's really hard to tell. Uh, cause like, remember it's a Frankenstein type of monster because really Indominus Rex and Indoraptor are pretty much movie monsters. They're movie monsters. They're not really, di- they're not real like, uh, dinosaurs to be exact. And I know you know that. And so I would say it's really hard to tell because like, yeah, it, the body design is based off of T-Rex. Uh, but it does have like the long arms of like say a Therizinosaurus. It's got like almost like the teeth of Spinosaurus, and it's also kind of almost got that skull of Giganotosaurus. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's really hard to tell if you know, what could a scientifically accurate um, Indominus Rex look like. It would have just been just a Frankenstein type of monster. And uh, who would win, Caprosuchus or Enhydrion omiensis? So. Um, Caprosuchus is an ancient crocodile that lived in Africa uh, in, the Cret- in the Cretaceous period. Uh, and then you got Enhydrion uh, omiensis, which is an ancient uh, ver- ancient uh, large otter. Uh, I think it was from the Miocene, if I remember correctly. And um, I think really Caprosuchus should win this one because, like, yeah, like Enhydrion. In- like it has those really gnarly looking canine teeth and probably a very powerful bite and probably is a bit more agile than Caprosuchus, but Caprosuchus is heavily armored. And so, cause remember crocodiles uh, have those bony scoots and those bony scoots are like shield armor uh, for them to, from like getting bitten uh, hard by anything. And so I'm going to go Caprosuchus on this one because Caprosuchus is probably going to have the bite force. And of course, uh, it's going to have uh, those like uh, much longer teeth to penetrate through uh, the skin of an hydrion. But yeah, that's a good question, though. Very, very good question. All right, so Nicholas, uh, your first question. Uh, I found an article on the internet about T-Rex being as smart as a primate and it said that its lifespan could be as long as 50 to 40 to 50 years. Is it possible or is it unlikely? And if you have read it or heard of this article, I've heard of this article. Um, it's because remember this article is kind of talking about like brain capacity and also like how much neurons uh, really were in the brain of, of Tyrannosaurus Rex and certain types of dinosaurs. Because remember birds have a lot of neurons in their brain. And so You can understand why some of them, some birds are really intelligent. They're really, really intelligent. But as for Tyrannosaurus rex, it's not going to be as intelligent as like, say, uh, like, uh, like anything 
associated like Sega Raven by any means, but I probably would say that in terms of like being as smart as a chimpanzee, that's pushing it. I probably would say is that is that it's smart enough for its time. That's all I can say is that we don't even know like how intelligent Tyrannosaurus Rex could actually have been. It would have been intelligent enough because it's a predatory animal and predators tend to usually have pretty good uh, intelligence to be able to detect the, they be able to detect like certain types of issues when it comes to what the prey is doing. But also they're smart enough to know that if they do get injured, they have to back off. They cannot continue because the one thing a predator does not want to do is get, is get fatally injured. And that's the one thing that predators do not want to do. And as for uh, could it live as long as 40 to 50 years? Um, predators like that size? I'd probably say no. Uh, because like it would have to survive a pretty good long time and also be kept fed uh, for a long time too. And also 40 to 50 years, that is really kind of a very old T-Rex. Because like if you think about how dogs age... Like say like a golden retriever for example, once it reaches ten, it's and it's, it's when it reaches to like say eight to nine years old, it's already at its elderly age, and so that really does uh, feel like that like with the Tyrannosaurus Rex because like they're kind of almost very similar to humans in a way, but like in terms of growth stage, but really when you're talking about like like say because like when they're right around like say nine to twelve years old. That's kind of almost like in their teenage stage, like like pre, like kind of like uh, end of preteen, beginning of teenage years. But then when they do get to thirteen, that's when they start getting really, really large, uh, growing really fast, and that's how you get like say really good teenage years to like most teenage years to like early adulthood uh, in terms of humans. But when it reaches like say. 19 or 20 years old and that's when the growth stage is when the growth stops or this starts leveling out and that's where you start to see like it's more like in like say late 20s to early 30s going towards 25 years old and that's where you start to see it might become more like a middle-aged t-rex and then when it reaches towards 30 that's when it's in its elderly age so i probably would say like it's hot hot highly and highly highly uh, unlikely that that could happen. Uh, a Tyrannosaur living 40 to 50 years, that is really pushing it. All right, your next one. How scientifically accurate are the dinosaur designs in Walking with Dinosaurs movie compared to other dinosaur movies, and what do you think of it? Um, I have seen this movie in theaters. I did not like it. Uh, when it, I did not like it because of the fact is that it kind of made it into more a kid-friendly film instead of just like a basic documentary like what Walking with Dinosaurs really was. And so that made, that got me pretty upset about that. But as for all, the overall designs of the dinosaurs, I'd say they're not too bad. Like the Gorgosaurus design I really, really liked. I really liked the Gorgosaurus design. I thought it was beautiful. I thought the colors were very, very nice uh, on the on that dinosaur. It's just that the Pachyrhinosaurus and the uh, duckbill di or like the Hadrosaurus that they had on there, they were like in dull colors, which I did not like that. I thought that was kind of like say, oh, just keep the keep the trend going with like dinosaurs being brown or otherwise gray. Like we can't just have that. Come on now. But for the feather dinosaurs, they were actually pretty well designed too. Pretty well designed. But yeah, have I seen the like the Cretaceous cut where like they cut out the audio of the voices and just made it look more like a documentary? I have not seen that yet. Um, some people say it, it, it's not at like it's a little bit better, but there's still problems uh, with it. And so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Walking with Dinosaurs movie. I I don't own it. I rather not own it. And so that just really kind of because that movie did put a bad taste in my mouth uh, for multiple reasons. And uh, and so <clears throat> your next one, uh, I have a couple questions about. Other long neck sauropods that lived at the same time as Sonorosaurus in the early Cretaceous. 
Uh, is it confirmed that both Sora Poseidon and Astrodon are Brachiosauridae or Titanosauridae? Seems, seems there is also not many fossils of these sauropods found. Question two, I was wondering about, is the long neck sauropods Polexisaurus and Plurosaurus be the same species as Sora Poseidon? Because I found it hard to believe. Seems there are not many fossil specimens and even a complete skeleton of these sauropods and is it confirmed that they are not and two and three do you think that more complete skeletons of these sauropods will be discovered and help determine that they are brachiosauridae or titanosauridae so you got a lot of questions on this one so let me start with this sauroposidon and astrodon uh those dinosaurs uh i believe they are considered uh, brachiosauridae, if I remember correctly. I think they are considered brachiosauridae because they have the similar body designs and also they have the same features as brachiosaurus. And so that does uh, be to be confirmed. Titanosaurus really didn't start out until a little bit later on uh, because titanosaurs never really made it to North America until the late Cretaceous period. Uh, and then for Poloxysaurus, that has been turned to Sauroposidon. Uh, Poloxysaurus is Sauroposidon. There is no question about that because the fossil specimens of Poloxysaurus, those were juveniles. And when you got the, when you got uh, Sauroposidon fossils that have been found in Oklahoma and there's some have also been found in Texas, those were adults that have been found. And so that makes sense is that Poloxysaurus is Sauroposidon and it's been confirmed. And so so if you're questioning uh, if like Poloxysaurus is a valid species, that's no longer the case. Poloxysaurus is Sauroposidon. And uh, Pleurocellus, I believe, I don't know anything about that one. I probably would say is that it's still Sauroposidon, but I'm not totally sure. Um, but complete skeletons for sauropods, those are not going to happen. Those are not going to happen unless if it's a juvenile, like a two-year-old juvenile that could be complete. Like there's a Camarasaurus that is two years old uh, that has been fossilized and it's nearly, and it's almost complete. It's like, like almost like, I think it's like 90%, 90 to 95% complete. Whereas like an adult, you're not going to get one. You're not going to get a complete skeleton of a, an adult sauropod because a lot of those bones are going to get scattered or, or otherwise some scavengers are going to take them. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. Uh, you cannot make this up. And so, so, sorry to disappoint you, but there is not going to be any complete adult robots. None. And so, all right, so the Facebook questions. Alex, uh, your question. Since Sorophaganax has was the largest theropod in the Morrison Formation, do you think that Sorophaganax was able to hunt the largest sauropod species in the Mor Morrison Formation, like Brachiosaurus and Supersaurus? Excellent question. And I think, yes, I think they can. Because Sorophaganax... Uh, is been is the largest theropod in the Morrison Formation. Can get uh, pretty close to forty feet long, and and with its size, it could probably go after uh, Supersaurus or Brachiosaurus. But they're more likely going to go after the juveniles. They're not going to go after the fully grown adults because fully grown adults are way too dangerous uh, for those theropods to go after. Especially Allosaurus. Like Allosaurus is not going to go after Brachiosaurus. He can go after the juveniles. And same thing with Supersaurus. Go after the juveniles. Don't need to go after the adults. You can scavenge off of a dead adult. That's what. That's one thing. But Sorophaganax probably would have been able to do it if it was, like, say, two Sorophaganaxes going after, uh, like, a pair. Let's say a pair of Sorophaganax, like a male and a female, were able to go out and attack, uh, like, say, a teenage uh, uh Brachiosaurus or Supersaurus. That can happen. That can happen. And so I probably would say, yes, uh, Sorophaganax would have been able to take to go after Supersaurus and Brachiosaurus. Good question, Alex. All right, Benjamin. Are terror birds the most dangerous of all prehistoric birds? Um, probably. Probably. Uh, because they're very fast and also they're predatory animals and and uh, they got nasty talons for, uh, or claws on their feet. And they also got a wicked looking beak. And that beak is very strong. And so, yeah, they can be the most dangerous birds. Is forest rockets the most studied of all terror birds? Um, it's one of them. But also Titanus willari is also very, high, very heavily studied. 
It's very, very heavily stuffed. Uh, but like with Kalinkin, it's not fully understood totally just yet. Uh, but there's a few that are out there that are pretty well understood there. Uh, is Megaloceros the biggest prehistoric deer? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think it could be, but I think Stagmus could actually have been bigger. I'm not totally sure. Uh, somebody in the comments, uh, please let me know. Uh, is Megaloceros or the giant Irish elk uh, larger than the Stagmus, or is the Stagmus uh, bigger than Megaloceros? Please let me know in the comments. And uh, who would win, Dakota Raptor or Force Rockus? And so you got a raptor dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period going up against a terror bird. And so the terror bird has got one thing. It's got speed. It's got speed. It's got agility. And also it's got brain power. Whereas Dakota Raptor's got some brain power, but not as much as Forrest Rockus. And, uh, in, and of course, Dakota Raptor's got those claws. It's got those teeth. Um, and so it would still have speed, but not as fast as Force Rockets and also not as agile as Force Rockets, but Dakota Raptor would have strength. That is the one thing that it's going to have. So this one's going to be close, but I'd say Dakota Raptor because Dakota Raptor, uh, probably would have the, has the much larger weaponry because like Force Rockets can try to like, try to like uh, hit the Dakota Raptor, uh, with its beak as much as it can. But I don't think it's actually going to do too much to Dakota Raptor. Unless if, like, Dakota Raptor took a gnarly hit uh, from that skull, from that beak, I should say. But Dakota Raptor would probably have been able to jump onto Forest Rockus and do some pretty gnarly damage to uh, Forest Rockus with those, like, uh, killing claws on the second toe of the feet. And, of course, uh, those hand claws. And so... But it, it can be very, really, I think it's really, really close. I'm leaning 52% Dakota Raptor, 48% Forest Rockus. But that's that's my, that's my uh, guess there. That's all the questions I got for today. And so next week will be a special episode. So I'll let you guys know what kind of prehistoric I'm going to talk about. So first special episode of 2024. And uh, so we'll, I'll let you guys know what kind of prehistoric I'm going to talk about. But you can still send me questions about dinosaurs and other prehistoric life. Feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Or go to my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dinochris. Like the page. You actually post your questions in the comment section. Please put them in the comment section. Don't, 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 don't put them on Messenger. Messenger is for private conversations. So please put your questions in the comment section on any Facebook post. And, uh, and also... For YouTubers out there, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel according to my analytics. So I'll let you guys to check out my channel and not subscribe yet. So please feel free to hit that like button because that's how the YouTube algorithm works. The more likes the video gets, the more likely it gets shared to people that are interested in dinosaurs, prehistoric life, paleontology, geology in general. So please hit that like button and also share the video, share the channel to anybody that is interested in dinosaurs and other prehistoric life. Feel free to do so. And also uh, subscribe. And uh, hit that notification bell, and it's like because I do weekly videos every single week, and so uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so, or hit that bell so that we can get notified of every video that comes out weekly. And also for YouTubers out there, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section because I do read them all. Your questions do mean a lot. All of you that send me questions via email, Facebook, and YouTube, you guys are awesome and giving me some great questions for these uh, Q and A episodes. So keep up the great work, and uh, and and it's awesome to, to answer your questions like this on video. And also make sure you keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Instagram at danodacrest.pf. I post pretty cool stuff on there. You can also follow me on, Inst on uh, Threads. Uh, same thing at dino.chris.pf uh, and I'll post pretty cool stuff on there as well. Also, take care, of people, take care of the people around you and also for your younger people out there and make sure you listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you could have for a good education. It's very important to have good education with a good education. You're going to get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.